This tutorial will address dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis can be used to convert units and to calculate values in a chemical equation. To convert units, you will be multiplying by factors of 1. It may not look like 1, but they're equal. 1 kilogram is 1,000 grams. 1 dozen is 12. Those are both factors of 1. And it's okay to do the conversions in multiple steps. For example, if you don't know the 1 kilogram to milligram conversion, it's okay to go from kilograms to grams and then grams to milligrams. Just make sure that the unit in the numerator cancels with the unit in the denominator until you achieve the units you're looking for. In this first example, 142 grams is desired to be converted to kilograms. You start with a 142 grams and grams is in the numerator. Then you'll multiply by a factor of one. We know that there's one kilogram for every 1,000 grams. You'll see that the gram unit in the numerator and the denominator cancel out and the only unit that you're left with is kilograms. In the second example, you can do the conversion in parts. For example, if you don't know the kilogram to milligram conversion, you can do it in two steps. Starting with the kilograms, then you'll multiply by 1,000 grams per kilogram. Your kilogram units cancel out. And then you'll go from grams to milligrams. There's 1,000 milligrams per gram and your gram units cancel out. If there are two units, for example, as in a density, convert one at a time. Again, make sure that the numerator cancels out with the denominator units until you achieve your final units. In this example, 237 grams per liter. First, I will convert from grams to kilograms. Put your gram unit in the denominator and your kilogram in the numerator so that your grams cancel out. And then you can multiply by one liter over 1,000 milliliters so that your liters cancel out. And the units you are left with are kilograms per milliliter. One very important thing in converting units is to be sure to distribute exponents to both the value and the unit when converting units. It's also important to know, especially in Chem 1113 and 1114, that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. In this example, I want to convert from grams per milliliter to kilograms per cubic meter. First, calculate uh, <clears throat> the grams, convert that to kilograms and you have the unit that you're looking for in the numerator. Then convert your milliliters to cubic centimeters by the identity that's given above and which needs to be memorized. And then we know that there's 100 centimeters in one meter, but we know that the value needs to be cubed. You'll need to cube both the unit and the value. Those are shown in the teal boxes distributing the cube. When calculating values, there's a strategy that needs to be used. First, start with a component that you know two things about, such as the mass and the molar mass. Then you'll get that component into moles. 
then use the mole ratio in the balanced chemical equation to switch components, and then you can get the second component from moles to the unit you need. We're going to describe this in two examples. In this example, we'll calculate how many grams of iodine are formed from 5.4167 grams of potassium permanganate. In this example, the mass and the molar mass of the solid potassium permanganate are known. The balanced chemical reaction is also given. You will start with the component that you know two pieces of information about, which is the mass and the molar mass of potassium permanganate. You'll get that into moles, and then you'll use the balanced chemical reaction of five moles of iodine for every two moles of potassium permanganate. And then when you need to get into grams of iodine, you'll simply multiply by the molar mass of iodine. In a similar example, how many milliliters of water are formed from that same mass of potassium permanganate? Uh, the density of water is given. Again, the mass and the molar mass of potassium permanganate are known, so you'll start there. Get that into moles, the potassium permanganate. Do a mole ratio, this time to water. So there are eight moles of water for every two moles of potassium permanganate. You'll use the molar mass of water to get to grams of water, and then use the density that is given in the problem statement to get to the milliliters of water. There are some helpful tips here. When you are flipping factors of one, you can do that as needed to cancel out a numerator unit with a denominator unit. But just be sure that the numerical value stays with the original numerator unit. There are two examples below, and you will see that the molar mass of copper, which is 63.55 grams per mole, the 63.55 stays with the gram unit. If you don't know where to start in a problem, Find the component you know two things about and multiply them first, canceling out the units and the numerator and the denominator. Two things could be mass and molar mass that we saw in our previous examples, volume and molarity. You can see that to the right. Moles and mole ratio or volume and density also shown to the right. Also, do dimensional analysis in one long string of factors instead of many individual steps. This will avoid transposition errors, writing things down incorrectly, and also calculation errors. It also speeds up the time in doing a dimensional analysis problem. But really, there is one thing that will help you immensely, which is practice, practice, practice. Do problems, do them again, and find more problems to do.